Now in this part of the question, we were given from the previous part that tan of theta plus pi upon 6 equaled 1 plus root 3 tan theta, all divided by root 3 minus tan theta. And we're told to, hence or otherwise, solve for theta between naught and pi inclusive. This equation. Now, that means, how, how are we going to relate this equation to what we're given? Well, can you see that it does look similar? We've got 1 plus root 3 tan theta here, both in both the equations. But if I was to divide both sides by root 3 minus tan theta, I would create the right-hand side of this equation. And that's how I'm going to relate this equation back to what we've discovered earlier. So let's divide both sides by root 3 minus tan theta. So if I do that, I've got 1 plus root 3 tan theta. And if I divide that then by root 3 minus tan theta, okay, it must leave me with the tan of pi minus theta. But we can see that from up here that this was the equivalent of the tan of theta plus pi upon 6. So I can say that therefore the tan of theta plus pi upon 6 must now be equal to the tan of pi minus theta. Now now that I've got this, because I've got two terms, and both of them take the tan of a particular angle, it must be that these two angles are exactly the same. So I can say that therefore theta plus pi upon 6 must equal pi minus theta. And you can see that if I add theta to both sides, I therefore have 2 theta. And if I take pi upon 6 from both sides, I get pi minus pi upon 6. Pi minus pi upon 6. So what does this leave me with? Well, pi is 6 sixths pi. Take away another sixth pi is 5 sixths pi. So I've got, if we just come down through here, I've got that therefore 2 theta equals 5 sixths pi. And if I now divide both sides by 2, I end up with it following that theta equals 5 pi over 12. Now the question did say find solutions. So I've only got one solution here. So where does the other solutions come from? Well, there's two ways that we can approach this. We could approach it through the quadrant diagram or a graphical method. Now, I always prefer the quadrant diagram method, but I will draw a graph for you and go through the graphical method for this particular question anyway. Let's start with the quadrant method, see what's happening. If I had the quadrants, okay, we'll just squeeze them in here because I think we're going to be fighting for space here. Let's say that this is uh, naught radians. Now, if we've got the tan of an angle equaling the tan of another angle, then we know that tan is going to be exactly the same. It's going to be both positive in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant. So in the normal way I'd draw lines equally inclined to this horizontal and I'd mark in that those two angles are exactly the same. So what we have got, we've got to be very careful here, it's so easy to trip up. We've got two angles, one round here where if we did the tan of it, it would be exactly the same as doing the tan of this angle all the way round to here. And the larger of the two angles is the theta plus pi upon 6. That is the green one. It's theta plus pi upon 6. The red one happens to be pi minus theta. So we'll just mark that in as pi minus theta. 
Now, as I say, if I did the tan of this angle, pi minus theta, it would give me exactly the same answer as the tan of theta plus pi upon 6. And that's essentially why I equated those two angles together. But here's the good bit. If I was to add pi to this angle, pi minus theta, it would take me half a turn all the way around to this one here. In other words, if I add pi to pi minus theta, it must also give me the same value as theta plus pi upon 6 if I did the tan of it. So I can say that pi minus theta plus another pi, let's just say pi minus theta plus another pi must equal theta plus pi upon 6. They would both give exactly the same value when you do the tan. So what have we got? We've got 2 pi minus theta equals theta plus pi upon 6. So if I was to add theta to both sides and take pi upon 6 from both sides, what I'd end up with is 11 sixths pi equals 2 theta. And so therefore, to get what theta is, just divide by 2 and I get that theta equals 11 twelfths pi. So you can see I have another angle that is in the range 0 to pi. If I wanted another solution, I could add on another pi to this value here. But I would find that it becomes out of range when I've finally rearranged it for theta. So these are my only two solutions. Theta equals 5 pi upon 12 or theta equals 11 pi on 12. Now I did say that we could also approach this from a graphical method. And so here it is. If we were to sketch the graph of the tan function, we would get something like this. We should be familiar with this graph. Tan graph has asymptotes at pi upon 2 radians and 3 pi upon 2 radians, the equivalent of 90 degrees and 270 degrees. And it crosses the axis here at naught and at pi radians, the equivalent of naught degrees and 180 degrees. So when we're looking at the tan of theta plus pi upon 6 equals the tan of pi minus theta, we're looking for a value here which returns exactly the same value for two angles, theta plus pi upon 6 and pi minus theta. If I was to draw a line across here, okay, then those places where you get the same value, if we project down onto the horizontal here, are these two angles here. These two angles are going to be, well, the larger one's going to be theta plus pi upon 6, and this one here is going to be pi minus theta. So they're going to be exactly the same. That would lead us to this result that we had earlier, theta equals 5 pi upon 12. But to appreciate this idea, can you see that if I was to add pi radians to this particular value, because the graph repeats itself, its period is pi radians, if I was to add pi radians to pi minus theta, it would take me to this value here. Both would give us exactly the same value when tanned. So we could say, well, OK, let's add another pi to this. So we've got pi minus theta plus another pi gives me the same tan value as I would get for theta plus pi upon 6. And that's what I did here. And you could see that through and get theta equals 11 pi over 12. So quite a tricky ending to this, OK? But hopefully you've been able to see how I've approached it from the quadrant method or from a graphical method. All right?